Well, hey, YouTube. Matt M. Roy back once again. You know, I wasn't planning on doing another video about this uh, Optiplex GX620, uh, at least not so soon, but I have so many fans out there that gave me uh, such good information that uh, I actually got the motivation up to complete it last night, and I just want to show you guys what I did. Uh, and some of you guys might find this video boring. It's basically going to be a recap of uh, what I did yesterday, but it's going to going to be adding in what I've actually uh, upgraded in this computer. So if you guys aren't interested, you can tune it off right now. But the rest of you that want to know, here we go. Once again, this is the Dell Optiplex GX620. Um, to recap what it had, it came with no memory and no hard drive. Uh, I had an Intel Pentium 4 hyperthread processor, which I later found out was running at 3.2 gigahertz, and that was about it. The only thing it really came with, other than the basic motherboard, was the dual-layer DVD burner, which does work perfectly fine, so that's going to go ahead and stay in there. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull the side cover off this beast. And I say a beast because I know a lot of you guys love these Dells, and I do too. Try the motherboards don't go out on them. Okay, so looking inside, you can actually see on the front here, this is where I put the hard drive. Um, originally the hard drive, I believe, would have sat over here. There was a brace that would go from here, and then it would have uh, connected somewhere, I believe, either on the north bridge or maybe even to one of these, but that was missing. So I had to put the hard drive where the uh, three and a quarter inch floppy drive would go. Um, you can barely tell it's there, and that's because the top part of the drive here that's normally silver, I took a Sharpie to and colored it black so it kind of blends in with the case. So really happy with the way that came out. That is that 320 gigabyte um, Samsung SATA drive that I put in there, and I double-checked it again. This hard drive works perfectly fine. Then I put four gigabytes of uh, DDR2. This is PC 6300 RAM, so I'm up to four gigs in this. And the one other thing I did, and um, Eric Brunhammer, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, um, suggested maybe try and upgrade the uh, CPU, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, in this computer, it had, again, the 3.2 gigahertz Pentium 4. Um, what I have in here now is a 3.2 gigahertz uh, Pentium D uh, 830 CPU. I believe that's what it is, 830. And this is an LGA 775 board, which I didn't think it was originally because I noticed the Pentium 4 in there did not have 64-bit um, capabilities. And to the best of my knowledge, the only Pentium 4s that didn't have... Uh, the ones that didn't have 64-bit capability were the pre-LGA ones, so that was a new one on me. I kind of thought maybe it was like a 479 chipset, but no, nope, it did wind up being the LGA 775. Um, I loaded Windows 7 on here, and it is running just great. So let's go ahead and turn her on. You can see, there you go, Pentium D inside. Um, the BIOS version is BIOS version A11, which I did find out is the highest version for this particular computer. Um, I was hoping to get, uh, I was thinking, maybe, I thought maybe they had the A13 out for this, but they didn't. The last BIOS update for this was, I think, in 2007, and that, of course, was the A11. You can see she boots fairly quickly. This, this is a pretty good hard drive. It doesn't have too many hours on it. I'm going to try to control this mouse with the left hand. That way I can continue filming with my uh, right hand. <laughs> it will get a little bit quicker. I just finished doing a lot of uh, installs on here, so that's why it's booting up a little slowly. Go ahead and fix the uh, resolution real quick. This does still only have the stock Intel graphics. I think it's the 8285. I I'll tell you guys in just a second. I think it's a 915G uh, chipset that's actually in this. Let's 
Yeah, it's, I'm sorry, it's the Intel uh, 82945G uh, video chipset. So, nothing too fancy, but it is fully compatible with uh, Windows 7. There are your RAMs right there, just for you guys that are interested. I'll go ahead and cancel that out. And we got to go ahead and put this up to the right resolution, which for this monitor is 1400 by 900. And there, that looks much better, don't you think? <laughs> All right. And just to show you guys that I'm telling the truth about the hard drive. You can see it is uh, 263 gigs free out of the 297. Of course, you know you never get a full uh, 320 gigabytes out of out of a 320 drive. Just like my one terabytes, I only wind up getting about 900 gigabytes because Windows uses some, and they tend to overrate the size of the actual hard drives. Uh, I think that's because I disconnected from the network before it had finished the last update. Um, one thing I want to check real quick is the uh, Windows experience. I don't know if it's actually uh, gone through that yet. But as you can see, again, it is a Pentium D, 3.2 gigahertz, 4 gigabytes of RAM. And interesting enough, it only lets you use a 3.5 gigs, and that's because, of course, the video card is using uh, some of the uh, memory. But I was thinking I might be able to ha find a... Uh, PCI Express card in it for this, but the problem is it has to be the half height one, and those are hard to find. The last time I saw one was at a uh, at our Google e recycling place, and they were asking an arm and a leg. They wanted like seventy, eighty dollars for it, and I'm not going to spend that for a computer that I literally paid nothing for. Looks like the uh, system rating hasn't populated yet, so I'm going to go ahead and run it through, and uh, we'll see what this system gets. All right. And as you can see, we have the experience index. Got a 3.2, which is actually pretty good considering that's just the uh, stock Intel graphics. Uh, 4.8 on the processor, that, that's not bad for a computer of this vintage. RAM, of course, is going to be up to a 5.2 because it is the higher DDR2. And then of the highest, oddly enough, is the <laughs> hard drive which is at a 5.9 and as you know unless you have an SSD drive that's about all you're going to get out of a uh, conventional hard drive so this has just been an update of the Dell Optiplex GX620 just wanted to let you guys know that I am taking your suggestions when it comes to uh, upgrading these systems that uh, Pentium D upgrade really made the difference I, I actually had installed the operating uh, Windows 7 on earlier with the Pentium 4 and I'm telling you it was a dog now, before I let you guys go, I still have this other Optiplex GX520 uh, to work with. And I think I'm going to try and upgrade the CPU on that one too. I don't have the exact same Pentium D that I put in the 620, but I do have this one, which is a, let's see, I don't know if the camera, whoop. <laughs> That's about the worst thing you can do is to drop one of these things. The camera's not going to focus on it, but this is a 820 running at uh, 3 gigahertz, so that should be perfectly fine for that computer as long as it'll accept a Pentium D. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this quick update video. Please remember to like and subscribe, and as always, have a blessed day, everybody.